afternoon, everybody. It's Monsignor Deutsch from St. Pat's. Uh, today I'm going to uh, start a, a series that will be on occasionally called OMA, A-L-M-A. It's an acronym. Uh, first of all, the word OMA means soul in Spanish, uh, but the acronym stands for Art, Literature, Music, and Architecture. And, and so I'll highlight uh, various aspects of the, the Catholic Church's contribution uh, to the development of Western civilization. And so today I thought I'd do a little bit, bit of uh, architecture and history combined, huh? Uh, architecture, because today we're gonna go and we're gonna talk about a place called the Milvian Bridge, or the Ponte Milvio, uh, which is in Rome. Um, and it, it's, a, it's also a, a very uh, uh, decisive moment uh, in the church's history, an event that took place at the Ponte Milvio on October 28th in the year 312, all right? So in the, in the year 312, uh, there were two emperors in Rome. The, the political situation in Rome and the empire was, was pretty chaotic and fragile. And there were two emperors, uh, co-emperors sharing power. Uh, one was the emperor Maxentius and the other was the emperor Constantine. Now, Maxentius kind of stayed back in Rome uh, behind the walls and he uh, took care of uh, running the city, running the empire, politics, administration. Constantine, uh, who was the son of uh, one of the previous emperors, Constantius, was uh, the more aggressive uh, and the, the warrior uh, em emperor. So he was off in the north uh, doing battle with uh, the barbarians that were threatening the empire's security. Yeah. So uh, Constantine is uh, way up north, and uh, meanwhile, Maxentius is thinking to himself, who's back in Rome taking care of business, thinking, you know what, I, I, I like running this show, and I think I can do it by myself. I don't need Constantine having to worry about him. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a coup and get rid of him. And, and so uh, Constantine is, is up north doing battle, and uh, he, get, he catches wind of the uh, rumors about uh, maybe a potential coup. And at the same time, he's also traveling in his uh, entourage. He's got his mo mother with him, Helena, who's, who we know as St. Helena. Helena is a Catholic, all right? So remember, the church at this stage is underground. It's, it's not sanctioned by the state. Um, but Constantine has a soft spot uh, for it because his mother is one, and uh, he allows her not only to travel with him, but also to bring a priest with who says mass for her in her tent. And so just as uh, Constantine is catching wind of this rumor back in Rome that there's, uh, there's trouble, that Maxentius is after him, uh, he's walking through the camp one day and he's, he looks into his mother's tent and he sees uh, the priest there saying mass. He sees the priest holding up the host. And you know he's intrigued by this whole business, his mother's religion. And, you know, that, uh, that night, uh, as he's sleeping, he dreams. And he has this uh, dream of uh, a cross in the sky emblazoned with the words, In hoc signo vinces. In hoc signo vinces. And it's the cross, this flaming cross. And, and, the, and the cross is uh, the sign by which he will conquer. In the sign you will conquer. In hoc signo vinces. And he recognizes the cross as the thing that uh, is the symbol of his mother's religion. And so that day he wakes up and he tells his army, uh, you know what, everybody put a cross on your, on your, uh, your garb, put a cross on your saddles, put a cross on everything. And uh, carry that cross uh, when, we, when we break camp and get on our way. And so Constantine, that day, moved south back towards Rome uh, to take care of this political business. But now he's got this standard, this cross that he's carrying with him because of the dream he had saying that by that cross, he was gonna be victorious. Well, as they got close to Rome, they camped uh, on the north end of the city. Now, coming out of the center of Rome is uh, the Via del Corso, which extends beyond the city walls is something called the Via uh, Flaminia. It's an, it's an ancient Rome. And, uh, left the city through the north a gate and extended into the northern regions of the empire. And so Constantine comes down and he camps outside the city on, 
uh, on the north side of the Tiber River, on the north side of the Tiber River, because uh, you know the river goes up through uh, Rome and, and snakes its way up north and, and curves around, and the Via Flaminia has to cross over the Tiber uh, on the north end uh, of, of the city of Rome, way up north. So here's Constantine camping on the north side of the Tiber River as the river is crossed by uh, the Ponte Milvio or the Milvian Bridge. All right, so he's there. And meanwhile, Constantius is back in Rome and they hear that, uh, or Maxentius hears that Constantine is up north, uh, right at the city gates uh, at the Ponte Milvio. Uh, and so Constantius thinks, my goodness, uh, I better take care of this. Uh, I better take care of this uh, this uh, problem. I better do a, a surprise attack on Constantine because I'm not a warrior, he is. And if I don't have the upper hand, he's gonna beat me. And so Maxentius in the, in the, the dead of night uh, takes his soldiers uh, north up the Via Flaminia towards the Ponte Milvio where Constantine is camped. And Constantine and his soldiers are unaware of this movement and they're sleeping in their tents and uh, getting ready for uh, the next day's march into Rome to uh, challenge uh, uh, Maxentius. Well, Maxentius is there already and in the dead of night as everybody's sleeping in their camp, Maxentius sends the soldiers across the Ponte Milvio, across the Milvian Bridge, uh, to sneak into Constantine's camp and to kill them all. And so they attack stealthily across the bridge and then they go headlong in their horses with their swords drawn into the camp uh, to, to kill Constantine and his, and his soldiers. Well, Constantine hears the, the screams and the cries of war, you know, that uh, invaders in the camp and he springs into action and he jumps up on his horse and he rallies his men and it holds up the cross in this sign, we will conquer in hoc signo vinces, holding up the cross. And they start, you know, at the beginning, they were losing the battle because it was a surprise attack, but eventually he's, he's beating back the soldiers, uh, Maxentius, back towards the bridge. And the, the uh, soldiers of Maxentius and Maxentius, they panic and they race towards the bridge. Now, architecturally speaking today, the bridge is a, is a wide four lane uh, uh, highway <clears throat> coming off of Via Flaminia uh, to go into the northern reaches of, of, of Rome. Uh, back then it was a very narrow bridge and this is where architecture plays a role in something very historic. Uh, it was because of the small size of the bridge that Constantine was able to prevail because as Maxentius and his soldiers panicked and went back towards the bridge, they were trapped and they were funneled into this narrow expanse of the bridge trying to get away, trying to get back down to Rome. Well, there were too many of them and they're on the bridge and they're, they're panicked and they're horses and they're and, and, and then Constantine soldiers charge in. Constantine charges in with swords drawn and they're hacking away at Maxentius and his soldiers and Constantine and Maxentius meet in the middle of the bridge <clears throat> and, Max, and, and Maxentius is knocked off his horse, knocked off the bridge into the Tiber. Constantine jumps in after him with his sword and picks him up and lops off his head and kills him. So Constantine has been victorious. The architecture of the Milvian Bridge provided for the victory that allowed Constantine uh, to be uh, the sole emperor of Rome uh, beginning in the year 312, October 28th, 312. Uh, that Milvian Bridge is still there, it's bigger, but it's the place where that battle took place. And I've been there, it's a, it's a very interesting intersection. There's a beautiful church at the head of it. Uh, it goes right off into the uh, uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic grounds where the Olympics were held back uh, in the 50s in Rome. <clears throat> so a lot of things going on there, but that bridge is, is amazing. Uh, now this is what happened as a result of that. Constantine takes the head of Maxentius, puts it on a pike, and carries it back into Rome with his, with his victorious soldiers and the prisoners of, the, the prisoner soldiers of Maxentius. And <clears throat> the, the, uh, the head on a pike of Maxentius was uh, a message to, his, to Constantine's rivals. It was a target of spit for the Roman mob, and it was a trophy uh, for the victor. 
uh, Constantine. He was victorious, sole emperor. And so what does he do? He, one of his first acts is to begin to uh, end the persecution of the Catholic Church, to bring the churches up from the catacombs and up from, up from hiding, and to begin through his mother Helena to bestow uh, property and buildings on the church so that they begin to uh, create basilicas and, and, and churches uh, worthy uh, of the worship of the mass that uh, Constantine had seen in the tent of his mother Helena as the priest raised the host, right? In hoc signo vences, in this sign you will conquer. And so he made that the standard of his, uh, of his whole government of the empire and allowed the church to come up. And uh, by the year, uh, uh, you know, uh, by, shortly thereafter, he legalized Christianity through the Edict of Milan and allowed the, the church uh, to take its rightful place in history. And it's because of the church then that we have Western civilization, art, architecture, uh, music, literature, medicine, universities, libraries, all because of the church, all because of Constantine, all because of the architecture of the Milvian Bridge, which allowed Constantine to slaughter his rival Maxentius. Huh? How about that story? All right, so this is Alma, art, literature, music, and architecture, beginning of our series. I wanted to start way back at the beginning in a, in a historic moment that was influenced by architecture. All right, brothers and sisters, have a great day, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Bye.